there! My name is Lori Fernandez. I'm an Olympic gold medalist for Team USA and proud to champion literacy and learning efforts with my friends at KPMG. I'd like to take you all on a little journey, one we can learn from and apply to our own lives. And learn from some special guests from across the country and space. Welcome to Philadelphia's home court. Welcome to Broadway. Welcome to the International Space Station. Welcome to Costa Mesa. Welcome to Crown Holdings. This is KPMG Virtual Field Trips. Have you ever heard of musicals like Wicked, Mamma Mia, The Phantom of the Opera, and Hamilton, my favorite? These are all examples of theater shows where actors and actresses perform plays and musicals in front of a live audience. There's so much that goes into putting on the big show. Big ideas need to be written into a script and songs need to be written for musicals. The actors and actresses need to learn their lines and how to sing the songs. Backstage crews need to build set pieces and the lights so everything on the stage is visible to the audience. Costume and makeup crews need to get the actors and actresses looking just like the characters that they're portraying. Putting on a play or musical is no small feat. While it isn't easy, live theater is very important as an art form. Unlike movies and TV, theater makes a connection between the performers and the audience members in real time. Since everyone is in the same room, the performers can actually see and hear the people watching them. The audience participates in the show by clapping and laughing, and the performers can usually respond to the audience in a unique way on any given night. There's so much we can learn from theater. It influences the way that we think and feel about our own lives and encourages us to take a hard look at ourselves, our values, and our behaviors. As an added bonus, there's even practical ways to apply what you're learning in school to live theater. Let's take a closer look. To learn more about theater, we need to head for the entertainment capital on the East Coast. Today, we're going to Broadway, NYC, where the bright lights of Times Square illuminate the biggest stars in live theater. We'll learn all about live theater from two of the best in the business, Darnell Abraham and Crystal Joy Brown, best known for their roles in a hit musical, Hamilton. Let's go. Welcome to Broadway, the theater capital of the United States, located in New York City. This collection of 41 theaters has seen the debut of some of the best live shows ever put on stage. While that's impressive, the Broadway we know and love today has gone through a lot of changes over the years. Back in the 1890s, it wasn't even called Broadway. The first name for New York's theater district was the Great White Way because it was one of the first streets in the city to be fully lit by white electric light bulbs. About 30 years later, Broadway debuted Showboat, the very first musical. Instead of performing songs randomly, Showboat used its songs to tell the story. In the 1940s, Broadway saw a golden age where its songs were massively popular. Famous singers of the time, Frank Sinatra and Bing Crosby, recorded versions of Oh, What a Beautiful Morning from the musical Oklahoma, and both versions reached the top 20 of the American charts. Fast forward to the 1950s, where things started to get a little tough for Broadway. People were less interested in seeing live theater because of the invention of the television. They could find entertainment at home in TV shows and sports broadcasts. Just like TV, movie theaters also became very popular with the invention of Technicolor. Old black and white movies could now be converted into full color. On top of that, New York City was seen as a dangerous place to visit. Things weren't looking good, but then the 1970s brought a Broadway revival. Greece, Chicago, a chorus line, and oh, Calcutta premiered and were widely successful. Phantom of the Opera came later in 1988 and became the longest running show on Broadway. Today, Many people associate Broadway with classic plays and musicals of years past, but new hits like Wicked and Hamilton prove that Broadway is still a great platform for new ideas and top-of-the-line entertainment. Now that we've got some background on Broadway, let's ask Crystal and Darnell a few questions. Hey guys, I'm Crystal Joy Brown and I play Eliza in Hamilton on Broadway. I have also been in four other Broadway shows and I do lots of different things. I write, I direct, I produce. Hi, my name is Darnell Abraham and I play the role of George Washington um, in Hamilton. And uh, I am just excited to be here today. Um, I've been acting for as long as I can remember. Started as a little kid 
And uh, since then, I've been very fortunate to be in several shows, um, Hamilton being the current. In addition to being an actor, I'm also a singer. Um, I've had the opportunity to sing back up for Seal, Will I Am, uh, Fantasia Barino here in Los Angeles. And so um, it's just good to be able to share a little bit about my journey and uh, talk a little bit about the industry. Hey, Crystal and Darnell, what does it take to produce a Broadway show? So performing on Broadway is, <laughs> it's like an Olympic sport of acting, right? I mean, there are so many moving parts and there are often like 200 people working behind the scenes to make sure that it is all running smoothly. We have lights. If you are wearing makeup in the show, they kind of give you a suggestion of how they would like to have your makeup, but then you do it yourself. There's a lot of things that go into it and you also are making sure that everything is right. You're doing quick changes backstage, so you wanna make sure that, you know, okay, well actually it's hard for me to make this button happen, so then that means it has to go to costumes. What is it like on tour? Like, uh, touring is so hard. You're right, I mean, in touring in many ways, it's like Broadway, but it's like Broadway 2.0 because we're moving every four to six weeks. In addition to all the things that you said, you know, I like to think of it, it's like this organized chaos, right? Uh, where, you know, you're doing the show, you're doing the thing, um, but also it's what we do when we're off stage also matters too because uh, we have to think about self-care, we have to think about what we eat, we have to think about exercising, we have to think about resting and all that stuff, you know, because we have to do this thing at a high level eight times a week. It's insane. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's all of that plus more. Hey, Crystal and Darnell, what's your favorite memory from working on Hamilton? There's so many special moments that happen in the theater, and especially with Hamilton, everyone is a character. There is a lot of personalities, um, and we all are trying to keep it fun, and so we're making fun of each other all the time. I love it. I mean, you know, we definitely have our gaffes on, on stage. I mean, there was one time without being too too detailed, um, I, I missed my, my entrance, and uh, I was so embarrassed. All I can say is that coming off that stage, like, you know, everyone just had like tears, just from laughing, just from laughing so hard. And, uh, but you keep going, you just keep doing the thing. You just gotta keep going and you gotta, <laughs> and hopefully no one will pay that much attention and you're just like, did anyone see that? Hope not. Hey, Crystal and Darnell, how did you get introduced to theater? I was in first grade. Um, my parents uh, sent me to Performing Arts Academy. It was a new world, a new experience, and it was exciting for me. Those were the early years of formation for me. And uh, my grandmothers, uh, God rest their souls, they would both say, um, you know, one day you're, you're, you're gonna be an actor. How about you, Crystal? I always watched all the Disney movies and learned every word with my sister. And my sister is also a musical theater nerd as, as well as I am. And we found this show called Rent. We had been listening to a lot of other musicals like Les Mis and Secret Garden and all this other stuff. But for the first time, we were hearing black people, Latino people, like really talking about their lives and talking about their experiences and living in that dream city of New York City. It hit me, you know, it just was like, whoa, that's something I could do. The representation matters. It, it matters to see that. Hey, Crystal and Darnell, was there a time in your life where you had a challenge or obstacle you had to overcome? Life is going to always be about facing challenges and obstacles. In this industry, rejection is a big one self-care self-care is so deep you know it's about really loving yourself and understanding that if you don't get a role or if you don't get something that isn't because you're not worthy of anything or love or attention or all of these things um it's just that that wasn't for you and there might be something around the corner that is even more right for you but it's taken me a very long time to realize that one of the challenges uh, for me early on in this industry was learning how to know who i am how to love myself so much of this experience has been one about self-discovery i am grateful for the arts because it has been a place where i have been able to overcome a lot of things and that because of people that's because of the community that i've been surrounded by both family and castmates and people like crystal just that energy that love and support means a lot do you have any tips for aspiring thespians who want to perform on Broadway? So I think if, if you're interested in, in pursuing a career in, in Broadway, in this industry, uh, my, my advice would be try everything. Try dancing, try you know different methods of acting. All of that uh, will help inform and shape your experience in this industry. How about you, Crystal, what do you think? One of the biggest tips I can tell you is that you are enough, you are worthy, you deserve to be here. We want to see you. We don't need the next Audra. She's amazing. Okay, no, we need the next you. Nobody thought Hamilton was a good idea. Lin-Manuel Miranda was on vacation. Someone had given him this 
very big book called Hamilton by Ron Chernow. And he was like, okay. And he starts reading it on the beach and he starts hearing lyrics and music coming. And he was like, oh my gosh. And he starts rapping and he was having this idea. And so he was like, I have to get in touch with this writer. The, and I'm, cause I want to make a, a musical about this. And the writer, it was like, uh, no. And he kept having that vision and kept having that pride in his idea. And he had this like confidence, like even when other people don't see it, because some people may not see it when you know it's like good, you know, because they're not ready, but you can get them excited and you can bring that enthusiasm. Hamilton would not have happened. People said no to investing. People said no to producing. And it was called Hamilton Mixtape at the time. And people were like, absolutely not. And then look at what it's become and how many lives it's changed and how many minds it's opened. How awesome was it that we got to hear from Crystal and Darnell? If all this talk of theater has you feeling inspired to take to the stage and play a character, we've got you covered with a breakdown of an acting technique that Darnell and Crystal have used. And for sets and props, you can use common household objects like chairs, tables, and pillows to build a set. Be creative and use your imagination. Here's how you can do it at home. We'll be learning the Meisner technique, which has three parts, emotional preparation, a repetition exercise, and improvisation. For emotional preparation, you need to determine your character's background and how it influences their decisions, feelings, reactions, and thoughts. Once you have your character's background figured out, you can use the repetition exercise to really feel the emotions of your character. This is done by partnering up with another actor and repeating a phrase again and again while building on what your partner says on each iteration. The repetition will immerse you in your character's emotions. The third and final part of the Meisner technique is improvisation. Improvisation is when you come up with a dialogue and actions for your character that aren't in the script. Instead of using the words on the page, you act as your character based on instinct and emotional connection. Improvisation can bring so much life and spontaneity into a scene. Now that you know the Meisner technique, it's time to practice what you've learned. Now, get out there and break a leg. And remember, breaking a leg is just another way of saying we hope you make it into the cast. Wow, we learned an awful lot about live theater today. Let's review everything with our takeaways from the day. For one thing, there are all sorts of ways to contribute to a theatrical production. Theater needs directors, writers, actors and actresses, set designers, costume crews, lighting crews, and so much more. We also learned a bit about the history of Broadway in New York City. For over a hundred years, its impressive collection of theaters has been the birthplace of so many wonderful plays and musicals while serving as the United States capital for live theater. Additionally, Crystal and Darnell taught us that performing on Broadway is not as easy as it looks. The physical toll of acting, singing, rapping, and dancing on stage takes so much out of you that it should definitely be considered an Olympic sport. We also learned that so much of what you're learning in school can be applied to the world of theater. A strong background in English is essential to writing a good script, and a good understanding of history can be a great help as well, as we all saw in Hamilton. Perhaps most importantly, Crystal and Darnell taught us that we are enough. We all deserve success in life, and no matter how big our dreams are, we can achieve them with hard work and perseverance. Well, kiddos, this is where I bid you goodbye. But before we say goodbye, let's hear once more from Crystal Joy Brown and Darnell Abraham. We know that sometimes it can be hard to connect the things that you're learning about in school with your future plans. But a good education is the foundation for the limitless possibilities you saw in today's episode. We encourage you to be a lifelong learner. To learn more about KPMG and its commitment to education and lifelong learning, please visit www.kpmg.us. Until next time, take care.